here are the facts. There is so much to cover, so much going on in the Below Deck universe this week, and I thought it'd be helpful just to hop in and start talking to y'all about what's going on in Below Deck world and what's coming up soon. Let's get into it. First up, let's go ahead and just talk about the season premiere of Below Deck Med. Ruin is getting a lot of heat and I even messaged him myself and said, hey, you got to share your side of the story or else this story is going to run away from you. The facts are that I do think Bravo probably knew that he didn't have all of his ducks in a row and here's why. Every single Yachty knows that you have to have the physical copies of your different certificates in order to be on the boat, uh, in order to be in the country, to be in that, uh, that dock, everything. You have to be up to the level with all of your details, um, and it can't be a photocopy. This is what all Yachties know. Even Natalia on Watch What Happens Live last night explained it so perfectly. This is just what you have to know as soon as you start in yachting at age 18 or whatever. So what's likely happened is that he's gotten away with it for a while because not every captain checks it and also not every country or port or whatever. Not every port is going to have officials that come and dock your boat at any time and can request all of your documents. She is docked in Genoa, Italy, and I'm not sure if that has something to do with it, but I do know that because she technically has a commercial vessel, um, that there's a higher standard that they hold for those certain boats, and they can detain the crew and the boats based on things that aren't up to snuff. So because of this specific type of boat, and this is like 900 something tons compared to the previous season where she was moving like a 450 ton vessel. So this is a much bigger boat. It has different rules and that's just what we know. So Ruin's been a little quiet on social media. I really think it would behoove him to share his perspective. Um, but if he doesn't want to, he doesn't have to. And yeah, I think it's kind of people like this that create a little bit of issue with us getting a full glimpse into why we don't do reunions. Yes, I see all the comments. I think sometimes people think I'm an official Bravo account, which like, trust me, I love it. It makes my ego this big, but I'm not an official Bravo account. And people are like, why isn't there a reunion? Which brings me to my next point. The reunions not happening for Below Deck Down Under Captain Jason addressed the specific issue and it really just came down to them not wanting to bring up one of the biggest events that happened on the boat all season, which was the issues they had with Luke and Laura. They are trying to protect Margo in that scenario. And I think just from understanding the pure logistical nightmare that it is with working with Yachties, I think, I mean, it's not like these people are all in the same country. When they are shooting a reunion with the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, they are going to Beverly Hills and they are recording it in a studio there, right? Vanderpump Rules, they literally recorded the reunion at Sur in their area. So I think it causes a logistical nightmare to figure out how to get all these different yachties who come from all different countries, have all different visas, different passports that allow them to go different places, not all places, um, especially when it comes to working in those places. So it's not as simple as just getting them all to come to New York and shoot in a studio. In an ideal world, um, if all the Yachties for a certain crew were all from the US and maybe England, you know, it might be a little bit easier to plan around, but it, it is just, it's more difficult. And it is technically them working uh, when they come here. So I think it's just a logistical nightmare and it's probably too expensive, honestly. Um, just because people on these shows make a lot of money and they spend a lot of money in production doesn't mean they have this like unending budget. Like these shows have a limit. So I get it. 
I too would like to see some closure and resolution. Um, but ultimately, I think on Below Deck, we're going to see this continue to be an issue. I think when the timing works out, we also know that Below Deck this past season didn't even have a reunion because Captain Sandy and Captain Lee couldn't make their schedules align. These kids are going from boat season to boat season, um, especially in Below Deck Down Under. We remember how it ended. They were all saying where they were going next. They were trying to get on new boats, go on to the next ocean, next charter season, moving on. So, I mean, they immediately go into a situation where they are living on a boat with limited Wi-Fi, limited hours that they can sit down and do an interview like this. They are going to a new employer immediately. Um, it just makes it difficult. And I think, you know, maybe Bravo has tried to do it for a little while and then it just proved to not be worth the squeeze in most situations. I don't think that they're completely done with shooting reunions for Below Deck, but I think it's just a logistical nightmare. So, you know, I hear it. I see the comments. Just a reminder, I don't have anything to do with it. And yeah, so you can leave the hate for the Bravo account, I guess. I I can't answer you. I don't know why. They, they didn't let me know. They didn't fill me in. So <laughs> next up, I want to talk about Gary King. We've already talked about the issues we've seen with Gary King with his alleged violations and um, SA and uh, yeah, several people working on the production crew sharing different stories that they experienced with Gary. And so I think it's important to call out that he has been dropped from the lineup for BravoCon. This is big news because we know that he already shot the entire season of Below Deck Sailing Yacht season five. So what we don't know is what's gonna happen next for Gary King. I highly doubt that they can edit him out as masterfully as they did on Below Deck. Um, oh gosh, y'all can help me in the comments. It was probably season three or season four um, when there was someone just completely inappropriate of Below Deck Med. Um, and they literally edited him out of the show when you watch it on streaming. So I don't think they can do that with Gary. He's such a main character. In all of this, I think they're really going to face a tough issue when this next season comes around. They may even, you know, I don't think they're going to pull the plug on it, but it's going to put that entire crew and really show in jeopardy if they can't figure out a way to smooth things over on Gary. The interesting thing about Gary is that he really hasn't confronted any of it. He's really stayed out of it. Captain Glenn has also not really confronted it. Uh, Daisy has kind of talked about it, um, but not really anything specific, just kind of a, a mention of it. And yeah, I think we really need to get to the bottom of what's going on. So hopefully whatever lawsuit or accusations or alleged crimes, anything like that, that he's done hopefully we find some resolution first and foremost for the victim but also yeah I don't really know what's going to happen next so I can't help you there I do know that at the end of Below Deck Mad we are probably going to get our first look at Below Deck that will be with Captain Carrie and we're excited to see this new crew I think it'll be a very different dynamic but I do know that Captain Kiri and Captain Lee are on great terms. And I do think Captain Kiri does have enough personality uh, if they kind of set him up for success. So I do think the crew coming out, I'll drop a video in the next week covering all the new crew that are going to be on below deck. But I do think it's going to be a blast. We know that. Frazier and Ben Willoughby are coming back and yeah, it's going to be fun. There are going to be some new faces and maybe some surprise faces. So we'll see on Below Deck. I'm excited to see Bravo with, uh, attempt to fill the big shoes that are Captain Lee 
in this franchise. So I think that's going to be a hit. Last up for Below Deck News is Captain Lee's podcast. It's called Salty. Uh, it is truly a joy. Oh, this week they posted a hilarious video of him reading out the lyrics to WAP as well as watching the music video. I highly recommend you watch it. It will bring you to tears. It is so funny. His facial expressions just kill me every time. Um, but his podcast is pretty good. I was kind of unsure when I started listening to it, knowing that Couch Talk really feels like Kate Chastain's main thing and that Lee is just there. Um, but he doesn't watch all the shows in depth, so him kind of weighing in on shows outside of Below Deck kind of didn't interest me because he just, uh, he didn't watch them. So it, it didn't really mean a lot to me. But his podcast is phenomenal and it's just him letting it rip, telling you like it is, his opinions on things that matter to him. And yeah, he's so fun. He has dropped some controversial opinions. He personally isn't a fan of Asia, which is crazy because everyone loves Asia. And if I could attempt her accent, gosh, I would. There's some good TikTok people out there who can really nail her accent. He feels wronged because Asia said that he was getting older and that that's why it was time for him to leave the show. I think it was more of her just saying that he was slowing down. Um, but yeah, I think of all the people that have said an opinion about why he might not be returning to Below Deck, I was really surprised that he took the most offense at Aisha since she's usually, you know, uh, the Switzerland of every different drama situation going on. So that'll be interesting. Also, can't wait for Winter House. I don't talk a lot about other shows on Bravo, but we do have multiple people from Below Deck Universe going to Winter House, and I cannot wait. Katie Flood, Malia White, Alex Propson are all going to be main characters in this. They are going to be stars of the show. And the best thing about this is that Winter House and Summer House have really needed to shake up the energy and get some new blood in there. And this crew is going to bring the party, that's for sure. We know that the Yachties are always going to be the best at partying and it's going to be fun. We're going to see a lot of friendship blooming for Alex and Tom Schwartz from Vanderpump Rules. Love that for both of them. Would ship the two of them, can't lie. But more importantly, we're going to see some great sizzling hot drama between Katie Flood and Tom Schwartz. I freaking love it. I love that there's all kinds of tension because her name is Katie, like his ex-wife. And yeah, I'm, I'm living for this drama that's about to unfold. Malia stirs the pot a little bit and Corey Kiefer before he was in his full committed relationship with Samantha was definitely having a little bit of flirtation ship with Malia and then Samantha shows up. Oh, the Yachties are bringing it and the best news of it all is that surprise Yachties are popping up left and right on the show. So we're going to see Aisha there. No surprise since she lives in the Breckenridge area. So, yeah, she stops in. Riley from Below Deck. Ah, uh, chef's kiss. She's such good drama. She's going to be stopping in. I love that. She's such a throwback to bring into the show, and I'm, I'm pumped about it. And even Captain Sandy are going to be, they're all going to be on the show. So, I think it's going to be really fun. I think we're going to see some Love triangle issues from really all three of the main stars and some great opinions and hot takes from the other three. So yeah, I can't wait. One thing I do want to talk about is last night on Watch What Happens Live, Natalia dropped an interesting comment that not only because of the drama we see, um, but it looks like it's only going to get worse. Natalia and Toomey and Kyle are not on good terms which is wild. It's wild because we're gonna see them at BravoCon. Toomey's gonna be there, and I'm pretty sure that Natalia's gonna be there. Uh, Luca's gonna be there. I, it's gonna be fun, but I think it's gonna get messy. 
I do think, I mentioned this on our TikTok the other day, but I do think that what they'll likely do is move Luca up to Bosun or provisional Bosun like they've done in the past with Storm and that they'll bring in another Deki. Um, I think that in order to get some good drama and relationships going that involve a guy other than Luca, <laughs> they're gonna have to bring in another guy. Um, some people have said that it might be Joao. God, I hope not. I'm over Joao. We gave him his chance. We're done. I don't think it is him. I think he goes back to captain his ship and meet the love of his life. And he, he's Gucci. He's good. So we don't have to worry about him anymore. But I do think it's alarming that these two cannot get along. I think even though we started out the season shorthanded on deckhands, and stewardesses, I think we are going to be in quite a pinch when everyone actually comes on board because we've got some real personality clash going on. Natalia is so fun, but she really only thrives when she's in charge and coming into someone else's authority uh, is gonna be challenging for her. One of my best friends who's in yachting, she brought out a great point, which is that Tumi and Natalia are both famous for their tablescaping. So a lot of their skills and their strong suits are in the same area. We only really see the interior crew get along when they have different strengths they can play to. And when you line up three different people who would call themselves the service queen, and might I just say, Kyle is the only person who actually calls himself the service queen but to me kyle natalia they're all great at service i think it's going to be really challenging i think it's going to be super challenging for jessica who now is going to move to fourth stew i bet that's not going to go over well um yeah i think everybody's going to fight over luca what's new join the rest of america guys and yeah it's going to be a messy season in the med. Those are all the big stories going on in the Below Deck universe right now. If you have any questions or you hear of anything else going on, you've got some inside scoop, drop it in the comments. Let me know. Weigh in on what you think about this season of Below Deck Med and what's coming up next in Below Deck. Can't wait to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Bye.